Hello everyone, kumusta po kayo? I hope that you are all doing good. This time, we will take a break or a pause mula sa mga regular contents po natin to give away sa mga questions and comments na natatanggap po natin dun sa mga published videos. But before that, if you are new to this channel and if you think that this channel can be of help in providing you with useful and relevant information, please feel free to subscribe to this channel and click on that notification bell icon so that you will get notified of our future videos. Maraming salamat po. I already have made several videos on dual citizenship but questions and comments do keep on coming so I decided to make this a video. Sa sobrang dami po ng mga tanong at comments na natatanggap natin pag pasensya niyo na po kung hindi lahat ay madidiscuss natin sa video na to. So now for the first question. The first question comes from Geography. He is asking, Hi attorney, what happens to your property in the Philippines if you don't want dual citizenship residing in Canada? Hi Geography, I am not sure if you are referring to a real property, but if you are a former Filipino citizen and you already owned a real property in the Philippines before you lost your Philippine citizenship, you still continue to own that property. Ang ipinagbabawal po ng Constitution ng Pilipinas ay yung pag-acquire ng lupa by a foreign citizen well except by hereditary succession. At hindi po saklaw ng prohibition na ito yung lupa na na-acquire nyo na at the time when you were still a Filipino citizen at before you became a foreign citizen. And for me, it should not matter if you decide na to acquire a dual citizenship. The next question is from Milicio Karunungan. He is asking, I am a dual citizen, Phil M. citizen. Are we allowed to run in public office, even in the local position like, for example, barangay position? Thank you, attorney, and God bless. Thank you for asking that question. Sa ilalim po ng RA 9225, pwede po kayong tumakbo sa elective positions sa Pilipinas. So, balit kailangan nyo pong i-renounce ang other citizenship po ninyo. Under Section 5 ng RA 9225, nakasaad po na... Those seeking elective public office in the Philippines shall meet the qualification for holding such public office as required by the constitution and existing laws and at the time of the filing of the certificate of candidacy make a personal and sworn renunciation of any and all foreign citizenship before any public officer authorized to administer an oath. So, kailangan nyo talagang i-sacrifice yung other citizenship po ninyo if you want to enter the Philippine politics, a barangay position, whether it is the position of the punong barangay or the position of the member of the sangguniang barangay is considered as an elective public office. We also have a comment from Mount Zion, Heavenly Jerusalem. Allow me to read this one. That is not true when you said that having a dual citizenship will lose your U.S. Social Security benefit. It only applies to a person who is born in the U.S. and renounced his U.S. citizenship. It does not apply to the person who is naturalized U.S. citizen. Well, with all due respect, I can vividly recall na hindi ko po sinabi na once you become a dual citizen, you will lose your U.S. social security benefits. On the contrary, ang sinabi ko po ay having a dual citizenship will not affect your social security benefit. Sana naman po ay huwag niyo akong i-misquote. And you must have read in the comments na may mga nakapag-claim naman po ng kanilang social security benefits kahit na sila ay nag-dual citizen na and they are already residing in the Philippines. Isa na po dito yung comment ni GV2035. Ang sabi po niya, Receiving your SSA benefits in the Philippines as a dual citizen is not a problem at all. Many commercial banks in the Philippines can legally receive SSA benefits for you as citizens living here. No problem. You just need to apply and a representative from the SSA office in the U.S. Embassy in Manila will call you for a phone interview. They tell you what to do and you get your benefits in the Philippine bank. I know because I am a dual citizen retired here and I am receiving benefits. My husband is a U.S. national who lives here in the Philippines and he receives his SSA benefits as well. Thank you, JV, for sharing that. It is well appreciated. We have another question here from JV Garcia. 
Attorney, can you also discuss the advantages and disadvantages of former Filipinos if in the future they wanted to do business in the Philippines? Does the 60-40 rule apply to former Filipinos? Are former Filipinos only limited to certain businesses or industry? Thank you for asking this question. This is a very good question to properly set the premise. When you acquire a foreign citizenship and thereby you abandon your Philippine citizenship, you necessarily become a foreigner from the point of view of the Philippine law. It is true that under RA 9225, you are not deemed to have lost your Philippine citizenship when you get naturalized as a citizen of another country. But RA 9225 requires that you should apply first for retention or reacquisition of your Philippine citizenship before you can enjoy the benefits under that law. So unless and until you comply with the requisite taking of an oath of allegiance to the Republic of the Philippines at yan po ang requirement ng RA 9225, you don't get to benefit from that law. Consequently, the restrictions that apply to foreigners when it comes to doing business in the Philippines shall apply to you. There are industries that are strictly reserved to Filipino citizens. That means 0% foreign ownership. There are also industries that must be 75% Filipino owned or 60% Filipino owned. But there are also industries in the Philippines that can be wholly owned by a foreigner subject only to certain requirements. Among them is the minimum amount of investment that should be infused. This can be found in the 2022 negative list. I also discussed this in part in this video. Sana po ay panoorin ninyo. Then we have another question. This one is from Juice Me. Hello, I am also an American citizen but I am a natural born Filipino. I have properties in the Philippines and most of it are inheritance. Reason why I'd like to get my dual citizenship. Do you have anything you can suggest? Thank you. If your only purpose in getting dual citizenship is for you to be able to keep the property that you already own, there's nothing wrong with that. Just know that even without getting dual citizenship, you can continue to keep that property. Even under the constitution, foreigners can acquire real property in the Philippines by hereditary succession. We have another question from American Trucker's Wife. Hello po sa lahat ng mga truckers at truckers wives around the world. Thank you for sharing this video, but what advice can you give me? Me and my husband are planning to buy a property in the Philippines. If I give up my Filipino citizenship, am I still entitled to own a property in the Philippines? Yes, being a former natural born Filipino citizen, under BP-185, you can be a transferee of up to 1,000 square meters of urban land or 1 hectare of rural land for residential purposes. Under RA-8179, you can also own up to 5,000 square meters of urban land or 3 hectares of rural land for business purposes. Another question is from Lucy Yagabas. Hello, kumusta po kayo? May tanong lang ako kasi dual citizen na ako dito sa Canada at retired na ako. May bahay ako sa Pilipinas. Papano ba yan? Hindi magbabayad ako ng double tax. At may mana pa ako sa aking nanay at tatay. Please, kailangan ko ang paliwanag ninyo. Thank you. God bless. Kung kayo po ay may bahay at lupa sa Pilipinas, batay po sa tax treaty ng Pilipinas at ng Canada, ang real property tax po ay dapat bayaran sa country o bansa kung saan naroon yung property. So in your case, it should be in the Philippines. Ganon din po kung ibebenta nyo yung property ninyo, Ang capital gains tax ay dapat bayaran doon sa country kung saan yung property is situated. It is logical dahil ang pag-transfer po ng registration o titulo ng property ay mangyayari sa Pilipinas and one of the requirements is mabayaran yung tax sa BIR. But I suppose na kailangan nyo pa rin i-declara ito sa CRA and you will need to provide the CRA with proof of your tax payments sa Pilipinas. When it comes to tax reporting in Canada, I suggest na you seek a professional tax advice there in Canada. In relation to tax, may tanong din po si gratitude to the universe. In my understanding about the tax is if you do not earn income in the Philippines, you will not be taxed if you are a dual citizen. Can they do double taxation in both countries? Please enlighten me. Thanks. Under Philippine tax law, we need to qualify. Kung kayo po ay Filipino dual citizen, you are treated as a Filipino citizen for purposes of Philippine income taxation. 
but it will depend on whether you are resident or non-resident of the Philippines. Kung kayo po ay resident citizen ng Pilipinas, taxable po ang income ninyo from within and from outside the Philippines. Kung kayo naman po ay non-resident Filipino citizen, taxable lang po kayo sa income ninyo na nanggaling from within the Philippines. So kung wala naman po kayong income na nanggaling sa Pilipinas and you are a non-resident Filipino citizen, hindi po kayo taxable sa Pilipinas. But as to whether or not taxable ba sa ibang bansa ang income ninyo na nanggaling sa Pilipinas, it would depend on whether or not may tax treaty ba ang Pilipinas at ang bansang yun. May nasa 43 countries na po na with whom the Philippines has a double tax agreement. I will provide you with a link to the list of the countries which have tax treaties with the Philippines and the copies of those double tax agreements in the description of this video. Maraming salamat po sa inyong mga tanong. Marami pa po tayong mga tanong na nais masagot but we will continue to do that in our next video. I hope na I was able to provide clear answers and explanations. Please let me know of your thoughts and reactions in the comment section below and please feel free to share this video and all my other videos to others who may possibly benefit from them. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please do so and don't forget to click on that notification bell icon so that you will get notified of our future videos. Always remember, ignorance of the law excuses no one from compliance therewith. I will see you in my next video. Ingat po kayo!